Well, this just in out of the world of hoops where Team USA is finalizing its roster for this summer's Paris Olympics. That's per multiple reports. The squad is headlined by LeBron James, who is playing in his first Olympics since 2012, along with Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and Joel Embiid. Team USA is reportedly holding one of its 12 roster spots open for a late addition. So here's a look now at the 11 players on the squad. Celtics duo T Jason Tatum and Drew Holiday will both be heading to Paris. The team will also include Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, Anthony Edwards, and Bam Adebayo. This year's squad will include five players from the 2020 Tokyo Olympics in Booker, Durant, Adebayo, Holiday, and Tatum. And we are now joined by CBS Sports NBA reporter Bill Ryder as we just get the news of the Summer Olympics and who we've got on this roster. And Bill, I just want to look at some of these names. I mean, I think we kind of expect to see some of these guys like Joel Embiid. We expect to see guys like LeBron James. But what were your biggest takeaways? I've got two. The first is USA is going for it. I mean, they are, Keanu, they are not messing around. They are sending the A team. The second thing, and it, I saw this, I had to confirm it, I didn't believe it. It's astounding to think about. Steph Curry has never played for his country, for our country, in the Olympics. He was not he was not selected in 2016. We know what happened in 2020. So this is the opportunity for, I think, the gr second greatest player of his generation to play alongside the greatest player of his generation in LeBron James, that era, and do it at an Olympics together for the first time, which is pretty exciting. Uh, there's still a name that's not on this roster. They said they're waiting for a potentially a late addition. Who is a name that maybe you would add to this roster? So okay, so I've got I've got who I would add. It's not going to be popular. In fact, I said this off camera, and the producer Lucas screamed at me, got really mad. <laughs> so America, get ready to scream. <laughs> I, I think I think bear, I think Draymond Green. Let, let me tell you why. Obviously, no Steph Curry. Uh, Draymond Green is controversial and difficult and pulls shenanigans. But since he got reinserted in that starting rotation for the Warriors, going back to January. That Warriors team has gone from a terrible defense to a top 10 defense, and they've been outstanding over that stretch despite where they are in the plan. And I think and I hope, and I don't have to be behind the consequences if I'm wrong, Kiana, I think playing for his country might might mellow him out a little bit, rein in some of those impulses we've seen get out of control. But he's an astounding player, and I think that kind of toughness and that kind of guy that will do the dirty work is important. This is a man that has accomplished a lot in his NBA career. NBA Finals, All-Star rosters. But you think this will be the thing to maybe calm him down a bit? <laughs> if this doesn't do it, then we know there's nothing that will. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think it's a lost clause. But a uh, very controversial addition to be said. All right. Uh, how about we look at players like Joel Embiid, who's currently dealing, you know, coming off of an injury and still looking ahead to the postseason. But considering where he's at, do you think it's a good move for him to participate in this? It is disconcerting. If you are the Philadelphia 76ers, you, you don't love it. If, like most NBA fans, or I'll speak for myself, like me, I love seeing Embiid on the floor. I, I, it makes me nervous. But far be it for me to criticize any player not to play for his country and not, not to go for gold. I, if I were Joel Embiid, if I were his agent or his GM or his coach or his best friend, my advice would be to the big guy, don't do it. You're getting older. Obviously, there's a, 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 a history of injuries here, but but I understand why he's doing it, and it makes me nervous, Kiana. But if he wants to play, if any of these guys want to play for their countries, I understand why. Yeah, it, it makes sense of why to play, but also a very tough situation, especially when you want to be healthy for the upcoming season. All right, but we're getting ahead of ourselves because we're still we're still waiting for the postseason to begin. But I want to talk about just this roster. It has so much firepower with some of these names that we just saw. But how do you see and where do you see Anthony Edwards fitting in? I think this is a great addition for him, and it's interesting because he's the future. And we saw when Carl Anthony Towns, who just returned, went down to injury with the Timberwolves, Ant really stepped up. And obviously, he led this team to a three seed. They could have been the one or the two. He is offensive firepower. And not that these other guys aren't, because you're talking about a who's who of excellence across the NBA. Though it's really nicely balanced in who they have and defensive excellence and star power. But this is a guy who can hit big shots. And the thing is, almost reminds me of the Melo role a few times around a few Olympics ago, Keanu, where Melo on his own team is the top scorer. But on the Olympic team, you can't double him. He's good. He, he has the potential to be the most important player because he's just he's going to get open looks. Anthony Edwards can create his own offense in the regular NBA in, in the Olympics. And you've got LeBron out there and you've got Steph out there and you have Jason Tatum and all those other names. This is the kind of player who could be almost entirely free to go out there with no pressure, not be the guy as a young star, and have some huge games.
He can have a huge game. Plenty of other people can have huge games on Team USA because we know what some of these names are capable of doing. But looking at this roster, who do you think might be able to maybe go toe to toe with Team USA? Well, I mean, like you talk about Spain, you talk about you talk about France. I mean, France with Wembenyama. Maybe that's a lot to ask because he's a young guy, but we've seen him just level up, especially over the end of the season, every two or three weeks. But the reality, Keon, is is with this with this roster and the players they've sent, and you've got Bam and Abayo on there, right? That is defense. You've got you've got um, if you throw my guy Draymond on there, that's defense. You have Drew Holiday, and I'm not saying that Drew Holiday and Bam can't score, but this is a really balanced team. It's not all just the big names. It is superstars. There are some young guys. We talked with Anthony Edwards. There are some defensive players. This is the best team in the world, and they are clearly the favorite to whoever they go up against. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch unfold, but we got a couple of months until then, but we'll enjoy this and, the, you know, we'll look at the Olympics down the line as well. Bill, appreciate the insight. Thank you so much. And if you want more from Bill, you're going to want to check out the Beyond the Arc podcast. Bill is joined each and every day by John Gonzalez and Ashton Colmoss, breaking down all the top storylines from around the association. The Beyond the Arc podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts.